Um, I'm Oscar Spiedenberg. Thank you for having me here. Um, uh, six years ago, I started a project uh, on a community-based, forum-based project uh, for building a cinema camera system. And um, we found an open source, uh, multi-purpose camera that uh, I thought was very usable to do something with. I was always looking for ways to uh, work with existing or come up with new ideas. But I'm an artist, I'm an, uh, a painter and filmmaker, and I'm not a programmer or a hardware developer. So I was looking for years for combining people, finding people, and uh, there were a lot of people came and go to the project. And after two years, I found uh, Sebastian Pichelhover, and he made a big drive uh, on the project that later beca became the Aperps project. So for the technical and all the, the difficult aspects, I would like to introduce Sebastian Pichel over to explain the project. Thank you a lot. I try to keep it simple and not as technical and difficult as it might sound, but uh, let me introduce the project. And I usually start with a quote that for me summarizes a lot what we are doing actually. It's from Lee Parker who has been an IMAX cinematographer for many, many years. And he summarized our project when he found out about it with, I grew up as a photographer in the dark room and I missed the intimacy of watching the image slowly appear on paper in the red of the safe light. The beauty of an open source camera to me is a step back towards the dark room in which making the tool is part of the joy of making the art. So what we have here is like 50 years of cinema camera development. On the left hand side we have an Aeroflex camera from, I don't know, long before I was born. And on the right we have a Sony F65, that's probably one of the most advanced cameras right now on the market. And what changed in the meantime? Is it purely the technical aspects that of course changed a lot, but what did it do to us as artists, to us as filmmakers? And the bad experience we made is that while the image quality, the film experience, we have stereo 3D now, high resolutions, high bit depths, high frame rates, everything's available to us now, but the freedom and the control we have over the camera and over the technology we're using actually decreased. So in total, the 50-year-old camera was a tool, a toy that every one of us could influence, that everyone could play around with, and it was open in its design and uh, understandable and documented. And the new camera is exactly the opposite. It's not allowing you to do anything with it that it was not supposed to be designed for and that it was not what it maybe also what you didn't pay for in the end. It's also a thing about price. So what we currently have in our hands to create films, to create projects, is a black box. We know what's going in. It's the light that we are filming and we know what's coming out the signal that we are recording, but we have no idea what's going on inside the camera. And as a DOP or as a creative industry professional, it's essential that you know what you're doing and how you can work with the tools that you're supposed to use. And to symbolize this black box here, I created uh, the most classic black box of them all. It's the flight recorder, which is actually not black, but red, so you can easier find it when the plane crashed but the name black box actually comes from a different angle of the thing, but uh, basically what we have is a black box with a, cam uh, with a lens on it, and it is what it is, and you can't really learn what it does, you can't change what it does, and that's probably one of the things that led to the creation of our project. We have the human evolution here, and what I tried to symbolize with the 
string puppet holding, I don't know if you can see it, it's a digital cinema camera, of course. And uh, all the big corporations, all the big companies spend a lot of resources, efforts and money to create a camera that they can sell well. They make it very expensive, of course, because it's the best that they come up, can come up with. And then they spend even more resources, even more efforts on artificially crippling the camera, removing functions so they can distribute it under uh, lower priced target markets. They make sure that you cannot find out what's going on inside the camera because it's basically their trade secret. When a company invents something and sells it, it's important that it's protected so the less the user knows about it, and the less they understand how to use it, the better the secret is protected inside the camera. So they invent encryption, uh, certain closed proprietary protocols, so only uh, accessories from the same company can be used with the camera that you have to buy from them, nobody else. And also that the camera can only be used for one specific application so that you cannot just use it for something else. You have to buy another camera from maybe a different manufacturer then, or you can have a payable upgrade from the same manufacturer, of course. So it all comes down to maximizing profit and limiting that way innovation. And that's exactly why we are here or why the project started in the end. It's about self-liberation and creating the tools for ourselves that we have full control over. And that way, we as artists, it's not just a technical project. I am a programmer and I created software, but I'm also a filmmaker and the driving force behind this was that I want to create films, I want to create footage and shoot films with technology that I can completely understand, that I can completely change, adapt, and that way, learn something about the way I work as well. So we created the Apertus project. It wasn't named Apertus from the beginning. It all started with a digital cinema or filmmaking forum thread where many people joined over time and thought the idea was great. And after we had so many people in our group, we were searching for a word that could summarize all the causes and all the ideas we had. And so we looked into the Latin language and chose Apertus, which stands for free, public, frank, clear. It's the same word that also creates the word aperture, blenden öffnung, it's also an opening, so openness all the way. And our mission statement is, we intend on creating an affordable, so the price is important, community-driven, free software and open hardware digital cinema motion picture camera catering to the requirements of a professional arts and production environment. Our experiences, wisdom, lessons learned on this path shall be shared and made freely available to everyone. So I highlighted a few words that I want to go into a little bit more detail. The one thing is affordable. So in contrast to the big corporations, we only have very limited power when it comes to manufacturing costs. We can't afford to create uh, volume productions of 100,000 to a million pieces, and that's what makes single units cheap. You have to build many of them. So even though we have a few members and we will create parts and hardware and cameras over time, uh, it won't start with a million pieces. We can start maybe with 100, maybe if we are lucky with thousands. So why we want to be producing as cheaply as possible. We have to admit that we don't have the means that big production companies have. So that's a limiting factor, of course, but as we grow, this limitation becomes smaller over time. The community is important. It's all bottom up from the community. We are all filmmakers. There's no professional production company involved, and if it is, it's also part of the community. There's no centralized uh, organization that influences us. Uh, everything should be free and open, and like many 
open source projects with cater only to like uh, playing around or experiencing things and uh, trying to get people involved in electronics and things like that. We want to make these cameras ready for a real film production from beginning to end. So it's a really high tech, a really high end goal we have. But yeah, we think we should aim high. So that's why we're here now. <laughs> So that's a picture from like four years ago. That's more than the DIY spirit that the project started with. Uh, it's, you could say it's our bazooka camera prototype. <laughs> and over the years it evolved, like in this case, uh, a guy in Australia shooting a stereo 3D movie currently, or is about to finish shooting, with two cameras in a stereo 3D rig. You can also see one of our cameras in the exhibition on the upper floor. And this was all possible because we found open and available technology from an American company, Alpha Inc. They produce scientific general purpose cameras which have found its way into many areas around the globe. Like there's one of the camera icons in San Francisco. It belongs to Google because they put these cameras in all of their street view cars, like thousands of them around the whole globe. But there are many other people. I am one of these symbols somewhere here in Europe and many more people all around the world, not in particular about uh, cinematography or creating things for the Apotus project. But these are all using the same technology that we started the project with. So we are all brothers and sisters in the end. And you can see, maybe you're asking why is there a symbol in the very, very south of Antarctica? And there are actually scientists using exactly the same technology in a, uh, in a submarine, a robotic submarine vehicle. And they drill holes and lift this device down below the ice and evaluate the wildlife down there. And it's the same technology and we share the software, we share experience. That's the spirit of the project. So to summarize, it all started with the idea to create a free camera in 2006. Now it's 2012 and it's much more already. It's uh, a group, a movement, an ideology of filmmakers who are collaborating on creating films, collaborating on creating software, hardware, uh, the camera in the end, but also accessories that go around it. We now have a guy who's building an open source tripod, for example, and other accessories that go into all kinds of different applications and areas. But it's not just about making a camera, as I said, it's also about creating films, and as Oscar uh, said before, we are now also in the process of creating our first feature film next year, hopefully with our camera. So, yeah, I don't wanna go into too much detail about that now, but it's going to happen, I hope. And even if all our efforts fail and if the whole camera, nobody uses it and it's all crap and everything, maybe we will change the world a little bit by scaring away the big corporations and at least they having to lower their prices or at least they might fear that they could lose market share and they open up their products a little bit. Maybe they add a few interfaces or they see that customers want to know what's going on. Maybe they improve their documentation. But yeah, I still hope we will succeed. <laughs> so what's the future of filmmaking? Is it a modular device like I found on the internet here? We don't know, but Modularity and flexibility is definitely the way to go in all aspects. So I hope we are upfront here. And we want to be part of it in the future as well. So the next big step for us is going from the community only project and only using off the shelf hardware by other companies and adapting it 
to create a crowdfunding campaign to create our own very first open source digital cinema camera from scrap. And that's exactly the transition we are going through right now with our community. The path towards Axiom, as we called our new, I don't wanna go into the technical details now, but it's very advanced, it's very state of the art. And we wanna do it as a community together. So it's not a company funding the production, it should be crowdfunded and every user, every end user, everyone who wants to have a camera should be part of creating it in the end. That's the idea and I hope it will work out. We're not entirely sure, but I hope we will have a good surprise soon. And that's it for me. Our names. And now that I'm a little bit faster than I anticipated, maybe I can show a short video that was also presented on the Ars Electronica website because, I don't know if I mentioned it before, we are here not just because we love talking about our project and about open source cinema, but also because we won an award of distinction and Ars Electronica paid all our tickets to come here and the hotel and everything. So, if it's possible and also with sound now. I'm not sure, I, I told you guys I don't need sound, but now I do. Yeah. I'll play back a little video that's also available on the Ars Electronica site and part of our application. It's only three minutes long. Mm -hmm. 